I'm Sue Kelso and my husband Bill is on the other side of the camera there and we want to welcome you to the Goodhart Artist Residency. So um, as you arrive, uh, there's a sculpture right here by David Vaughn who lives in New York but he also has a summer place two houses away. So what we're going to do is take you in the studio and take you in the residency and give you a little tour. Alright, so the studio, welcome. The garage door or studio door is a hydraulic lift door and it creates an outdoor painting space. Let's go inside. Okay, this is the artist studio. It is filled with bikes and lawn furniture right now, but um, it's set up all for the artists to be able to do their work out here. So we worked with um, alumni artists and other artists in the area to design the studio. And important things to them were light. So on the northern side, we have the biggest windows. We also have ventilation on all four sides of the building. It's about 24 by 24 with the main studio space and then a work, kind of a little workshop storage area and a bathroom. So um, the other thing that they was really important to them besides light was that they have adequate wall space to work on. So all the windows, we try to keep them about eight foot off the ground so that they have a working wall space. We, most of our equipment is on wheels so the artists can situate the studio to work whatever way works best for them. We even put electrical outlets on the ceiling because some people, uh, and hooks and things like that. So some people actually suspend things and work on them. And need or need power from above. Um, a 10 by 10 foot outdoor covered uh, porch for probably the dirtiest of work to be done. And it is, it does have a heater, but we really only intend to operate like May through October. Um, but this is where the artists work and we try to provide them with whatever they need, but they are, they do ship in all their basic um, studio supplies. out the big heart-shaped boulder. Uh, we found that up on our property and had the excavator bring it down here, but it's, uh, we like rocks. It's a nice feature for us. Locally made railings for, um, and sloped entrance for accessibility, and this beautiful painting is by Steve Wolf, who is a, a neighbor right here in Goodhart. Come on in. We worked with David O'Neill, who's a local architect here in Arbor Springs, to um, design this building. Uh, we wanted something that was um, warm and cozy, something that was very energy efficient, very utilitarian, so like the concrete floors and things like that good, long, hard-lasting surfaces. So um, because we are about art, place, and community, in this building we feature our alumni artists, um, a lot of the local artists, and other Michigan artists. Um, and there is art throughout. The place is important, being good heart, it's just a special place. And community, we love to welcome people in uh, for open studios and things like that, and to come and enjoy the art, meet the artist, and, and see their work. So in designing this main room, we wanted a big open space for community to be comfortable gathering. On um, the, the, the north wall, we have the three tiered windows there, the three small windows. And our, my th thoughts there was we wanted to focus on like picture framing nature so you can capture a glimpse of nature as you walk up the stairway, your glimpse of nature changes. And then in this room on the opposite wall, we have our gallery space. This wall is um, a lot of art, artwork from local artists and our alumni artists. Um, and some from our daughter and our son-in-law also. Um, but it's just uh, beautiful. Here's a real close-up of an um, image that Kalina Winska created. She was the first artist 
uh, here, well, not here at this space, but up above at our residence. Uh, first one to attend our residency would be seven years ago now. But if you kind of back up and look at this overall space, we've got work by Amanda Hamilton, uh, my son-in-law, Justin Kellner, Lindsay Dunnigan, who I think she was here the first year too. Um, and then a piece by Jane Cardinal. That's Andrew J. Blackbird. And then uh, Kirsten Furlong, who is uh, here in the fall. We have art even in every little corner pretty much of the bathroom here. But it was really important for us to be welcoming to all. So the whole building is built with accessibility in mind. The studio space is ADA compliant. This bathroom has a lot of features, um, such as the handrails and a maneuverable space and things on wheels that can be moved, and the open sink below for easy wheelchair access, lower hooks, just a lot of features that make it um, welcoming, so it's accessible to anybody to use. This is a recent piece right here that to remind us of COVID-19 time by Stephen Walker, who was here in 2018. So. And Mike Marks, that's a different one we haven't mentioned yet. So, accessibility. All right, so this the building is only one bedroom downstairs because we in general host just one artist at a time and then the loft is upstairs. So even things like the height of the bed made it were important with accessibility in mind. And again, we've got local artists um, work all over the place. We keep a journal here of everyone that's come here and made art, and they leave some type of remembrance um, in the book, which is a lot of fun for us to come and read. Okay, the kitchen. Um, Bill just finished the tile in the kitchen. Um, the kitchen table even is a family heirloom of mine, and my parents had it. We have a large family, but it's uh, meant to be used, so um, artists can sit here and work, or writers have sat at the table and, and written. So um, we have art again throughout here. Um, this is something recent that we've gotten. Uh, that, that's the Terry Moody piece up there. This is a Grand Rapids artist, and I feel like it kind of tells the history or the story of this area where it would have been Native American fishermen um, living here, and then era of kind of building where there was a small, you know, a village of up to 3,000 people in Middle Village, you know, Goodhart, and now kind of a T-pin, an artist, uh, little trademark, uh, fiber artist or whatever, so kind of tells the story for us who's been here. All right, and there's a nice patio outside that we've been, <laughs> Bill and I haven't stayed here really, so, but the, the artists have told us that it's really nice when we have the patio furniture out there to sit and have a cup of coffee and kind of get glimpses of the lake out there and, or listen to the lake out there. Okay, I talked about lighting in the studio, but lighting was really important here too. So we've got tons of light coming in the building from west side and on the north side also. So in the even in the winter, somebody could push that table up against that north wall and have really good light coming in uh, for painting or drawing or whatever. So as I go up the stairs, um, I get a nice view of the gallery wall and the hanging the big sash is part of a kimono. And I keep, is it Obi? I keep remember, forgetting the word, but that Mamie Takahashi was a resident here and she and her mother came back and visited and her mother brought that. Uh, well, she brought the full kimono, but that's the sash from it. It's silk on silk. And it was her great aunt's, part of her great aunt's kimono. So the screen up here is also um, silk embroidery. And that was a wedding gift in 1968 to Myung um, Ainsworth and she donated it to the residency, so we have a privacy screen up there on the stairs. If you look straight up, you can see the bright orange ceiling fan. All right, we're up in the loft, which is meant to be a really cozy, comforting place. So we've 
you've got a really nice comfortable lounging chair there and the sofa which is a sleeper sofa too but and artwork up here also so some of our daughter Megan Kelso's work and uh, Catherine McClung piece and then a um, off-field piece um, it's Andrew J Blackbird's sister and then everyone gives me a little hard time but my bright green bathroom is also full of art in there I've got a Sue Schultz piece in there and a couple other artists too So you look into the north now and you got another, well, a piece, um, a poem by Nicholas Butler. Um, he stayed here and finished a novel and we're excited to read that. Another local artist up there with the three black and white prints. And even Al Dickin with um, his rocks, his uh, big pudding stone bookend. So uh, we try to keep a good mix of things for the, you know, writers and the, re the artists to read. We've got uh, a whole bunch of donated books or books we've picked up at the mini fair, art books that other whole cupboards full of those too. So a lot of resources. So while the residents are staying here, they get a two to three week stay. They get all their food provided thanks to generous donations uh, from the community. And we pay them a $500 stipend because they do some type of community work here, whether it's a workshop or a um, artist talk or the open studios, whatever they might be doing, it's important for us to connect them with the community. So, um, yeah, we just try to nurture, nurture artists and writers and help them in their creative work. So we hope you can come back here for a real live visit sometime, come to an open studio on a Saturday, uh, once we're able to hold those again, and join us for Coffee and Scone. Thanks for letting us show you around.